Okay, this uh, video is mostly for my students taking A-level electronics. Might be of interest to other people. What I'm going to show you is how we can use a feature in MPLAB X, which I've got open here, to count the number of instruction cycles that some code, um, code uses. So, for example, here I say, uh, I haven't checked it yet, I say that this code is going to delay 100 microseconds, but uh, we would need to actually check that. And so how can we do that? Well, when we're simulating, uh, we can easily run a stopwatch and count the number of instruction cycles and we know that if we we have an external oscillator of four megahertz and that's going to be divided by four so that's going to give us one in one instruction cycle per one microsecond then if we count the number of instruction cycles we should be able to determine the duration that something takes to execute okay so um, let's just have a very quick look at the code. Uh, nothing special here. I'll just set up the processor, um, add in the include file, set up some uh, equates so I can conveniently access some uh, addresses for saving some user data. And then you know, this is the important thing I go to start. So there we go. We go to the start label there. And my code currently is all that's commented out. I've got a no operation and then I go to dollar which is just going to go to whatever right well, it's going to go to that current line okay so let's just quickly run just make sure we don't have any errors and it's just running at that point it's just repeatedly going to the uh, current location of the program counter uh, this time around let's add a breakpoint and window debugging stopwatch stopwatch is open down here I don't like it there I want it over here so I'll just park it over here and you see that I've been doing some other stuff recently let's just uh, delete all that out and in fact I'll also clear the stopwatch yeah that message sometimes comes up when you do it first time around don't worry about that so let's just run and you now say you'll now see that it's suggesting that the stopwatch cycle count, the number of instruction cycles that is executed in my program so far to get to this position, is two two instruction cycles. You might think, well, what's actually executed? Let's have a look. Now remember, none of this is executable code. That's just stuff that the um, the assembler is going to interpret. Uh, these are assembly directives. Um, but this is an instruction and a go-to uh, and in fact um, any instruction that modifies program counter is going to use two instruction cycles so go-to start actually used two instruction cycles as I would expect that so if I were to press F7 or F8 I would be executing that command and then going to the next thing so let's just press F8 uh, no operation takes one instruction cycle so there we go We've now executed a total of, or used a total of three instruction cycles. And if I were to repeatedly press F8, it's counting up by two each time, because GoTo uses two instruction cycles. Let's just stop that. I'll remove the breakpoint, and I will uncomment that. Call init my initialization subroutine. So let's have a look at my initialization subroutine. Let's see what I do. Well, I call it first of all, that calling. Uh, a subroutine is going to change program counter, so that's going to use two instruction cycles. Uh, this uh, bit set file is going to use one instruction cycle, clear file, one instruction cycle, bit clear file, one instruction cycle, return two instruction cycles. So that gives us two, and then three more, so that's five, and then six, seven. So that's going to use seven instruction cycles to do that. So let's uh, have a breakpoint there. Let's run this. It says that we've currently used three instruction cycles, which is correct because we used go to start. That's two. We did a no operation. That makes it three. And now we're waiting to execute this bit. So if I press F8, F8 is, I think you're going to see them under here somewhere, uh, it steps over. So what it actually does is 
it does whatever's in, in it, but we don't actually go into in it and step through each of the instructions separately. So let's just do F8. We said it was going to be seven instruction cycles, didn't we? So press F8. Yep, and three plus seven, ten instruction cycles. And stop the code. Let's uh, run the code again. So we're back to three instruction cycles. Let's press F7. And now we're at this point. Now remember we were at three, we're now at five. Uh, so we use, just used two instruction cycles, so that was the call. So then press uh, F8. That's going to use one more instruction cycle, and then one more instruction cycle, one more instruction cycle. So we're now up to eight. Return is going to use two, so press F8. And sure enough, it did.